Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today what we are going to be discussing is how tracking error works and what exactly is tracking error. So if you look at any uh, investor, right, an investor has an aspiration to beat the underlying benchmark and generate good returns in the portfolio. If you look at the past, um, we have a lot of active funds that have been able to beat the underlying benchmark very easily. And I think this has been a good enough motivation for the investors to stay invested in active mutual funds. If you look at the active mutual funds, I mean, why are they able to uh, beat the underlying index or the benchmark is because of the fund manager's ability to deviate from, uh, you know, the allocation that the benchmark gives in terms of stocks or sectors or different categories of companies. And that is why because the fund manager is able to change that allocation and generate alpha, it is the reason why he's able to beat the underlying index as well. Now, uh, you know, beating the underlying benchmark was not very difficult in uh, till 2018 because um, there's a very well kept secret, which is that till 2018, uh, the return calculation was done based on price return index. Now, what is price return index or PRI? So PRI basically just takes into account the changes in the price of the stock and not really the dividends given out by the stocks. So because of which a lot of uh, you know funds or the active funds were using the price return index to make their calculation in terms of the benchmark, whereas for the fund in itself, they were using the price changes as well as the dividends declared by the stock. So it wasn't really difficult to beat the benchmark. But from Feb 2018, we have started using the total return index or TRI. Now TRI takes into account the change in price as well as the dividends which are given by the stocks. And since then, since TRI has been used, a lot of active funds have been struggling to beat the underlying benchmark in terms of returns. Now we as an investor who are paying an expense ratio upwards of 1% in an active fund and we are investing in funds who are not able to beat the underlying benchmark obviously disappoints us and then we are you know we would end up asking some very fundamental questions you know questions like why should i invest in an active fund by paying such a high expense ratio and my fund is not even beating the benchmark why can i not invest in a passive fund which uh, you know which is basically investing in an index where uh, i'm replicating the portfolio as well as getting the return similar to that of the index so if we see since 2018 passive funds have really picked up pace and especially if we look at exchange traded funds or ETFs uh, you know their AUMs have gone up drastically the number of schemes which are available in the market have really gone up and I think the expectation from ETFs is very simple uh, to charge us a low expense ratio and to give us the returns which are closer to the market. So now the question is how are ETFs or index funds able to give us returns which are closer to the market? It's really simple because they are investing uh, you know, they're replicating a particular index. So basically they are investing in the exact same stocks in the exact same weightage as that of the index. So now, obviously, if we are investing in ETFs or index funds, our expectation is to get returns which are in line with the market. But the question is, do we really get returns uh, exactly as what the market is delivering? Sometimes there are ETFs which give us returns which are slightly lesser than what the market is generating. And this phenomena is called tracking error. So what exactly is tracking error? So tracking error is basically the difference between the returns generated by the fund versus the returns generated by the underlying benchmark that the fund is replicating. So now as an investor, obviously, we are always asking this question that why should there be a tracking error? Why should there be a difference between the returns? Well, uh, the answer is really simple. It's because of three main reasons. And the three reasons are, firstly, the expense ratio, which is charged by the fund. Second is uh, most of the funds hold a portion of their portfolio in cash. And third is because of the increase in the impact cost due to poor liquidity of ETFs. So now let's understand each of these three points in more detail. So let's first understand about expense ratio or TER. Now, any mutual fund scheme has multiple expenses that they have to bear. Now, the expenses could be the brokerage fees that they have to pay for buying and selling of shares. They could be the audit fees which are paid for auditing the scheme, or they could be any other compliance costs which the uh, fund has to bear. 
And all these expenses, eventually it's the investor who has to bear in the form of an expense ratio. Now, when you're looking at the expense ratio for index funds or, ETF, uh, or ETFs, as per the regulation, they can charge a maximum of 1% in the form of expense ratio. Uh, so in the current scenario, if you look at the expense ratio charged by these funds, it's as low as 0.05% and it could go on till 0.7%. But generally speaking, the expense ratio charged by gold and silver ETFs is on the higher side for a very simple reason because there's a storage cost involved in these ETFs. So for example, Nippon India Gold ETF charges an expense ratio of 0.4% and ICICI Prudential Silver ETF charges an expense ratio of 0.7%. Now the table that you see on the screen will help you understand the expense ratio charged by different index funds and ETFs. So when the expense ratio is charged, the returns generated by the fund reduces. And this obviously impacts the performance of the fund as compared to the benchmark because the benchmark has no expense ratio. And this is one of the main reasons for tracking error. Now let's look at cash holding. So all index funds and ETFs have to have a small allocation of their portfolio in cash. And this is done because these funds cannot time the market, which is wait for the right time to invest in equity or in gold. But um, as all of us know, all the mutual fund schemes uh, have to pay expenses on a daily basis. So now if the expenses are deducted on a daily basis from the fund portfolio, how will the AMC recover these expenses? So to manage these expenses, these funds give a small allocation to cash through which the expenses can be managed. For example, if you look at the table below, ICICI Prudential Nifty ETF holds 0.02% of its portfolio in cash, whereas Nippon India ETF Nifty B's fund holds 0.09% in cash. So higher the cash component means lesser is that portion of the portfolio which is getting invested in the underlying index and hence the tracking error. Next, if we look at the impact cost or liquidity. Now this is mainly applicable in case of ETFs because ETF units can only be bought and sold from the secondary market which is the stock exchanges. Now on a particular day if you want to buy or sell an ETF unit you need a suitable counterparty on the opposite side. Now if the difference between the buy and sell is higher the impact cost of the transaction is also going to be higher and this is because of lower liquidity. Now, not all ETFs have good liquidity in the market, and this is one of the points to consider while shortlisting an ETF. The recent guidelines from SEBI requires equity-oriented ETFs or index funds to have the tracking error not exceed 2%, and for debt-oriented uh, ETFs or index funds, the tracking error should not increase, uh, exceed 1.25%. So just to sum up, all the three points that we've discussed eventually lead to tracking error and the tracking error information is available in the fund fact sheet. So if you're looking at a tracking error and the tracking error is on the higher side, it basically means the difference in terms of the returns generated by the fund versus the index on the higher side. So ideally look for those funds with lower tracking error. But at the same time, always compare within the same category. So if you're looking at a Nifty 50 ETF, compare that with uh, you know, other Nifty 50 ETFs from uh, other fund houses. Do not compare a Nifty 50 ETF with a Nifty Midcap 150 ETF. That may not uh, be right. So I hope you've liked this video. I hope you were able to understand about tracking error. So of course, if you've liked the video, hit the like button, share it with everyone, subscribe to the Grow Mutual Fund channel. And please don't take any of the funds that we've discussed in this video as our advice or as our recommendation. Thank you so much for watching. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Please read the risk disclosure documents carefully before investing in equity shares, derivatives, mutual fund, and all other instruments traded on the stock exchanges.